My friend and colleague John McCain once said, we are Americans first, Americans last, Americans always. Take courage from the knowledge that our military superiority is matched only by the superiority of our ideals and our unconquerable love for them. John was my friend. He was a man deeply in love with our nation and its promise, a man optimistic that tomorrow would be better than today, and a man grateful for a chance to serve a cause greater than himself. Um, it fills my heart with more joy than I can convey to you to hear that message from Cindy um, and to know that uh, I am doing what little I can to deserve this award. To Ann Mora, um, thank you for everything you've done over 17 years to lift national service, um, to haunt me through all the various chapters of my life, to be a continuous presence and reminder um, that the voices of national service which you lift up um, are exactly the sort of chorus uh, which can help sing back to life our national spirit. We need in abundance what Ann Mora and the voices of national service are lifting up and making possible. So let's give Ann Mora, if we could, a round of applause. Thank you for everything you do. Um, to David Cohen, thank you for decades of decency, of commitment, of civic leadership, of a tireless determination um, to find young leaders and to give them support and encouragement and guidance and to invest and invest and invest in models and programs that make an amazing difference in our nation. I am so grateful for everything you've done and for your friendship. Thank you, David. And a round of applause, if you could, for David Cohen. To Barbara Stewart, who's the CEO of CNCS and who's with us this evening, and to everybody at the Corporation for National Community Service who continues the work of service and engaging and reaching out and building partnerships from the grassroots up, um, thank you, Barbara, for coming to visit Delaware, for being a tireless advocate for national service, and for helping us bridge some of the challenging divides here in our nation's capital. Barbara. And to my Republican colleagues, and in particular, if I might, to my friend and a colleague in the Senate, Senator Roy Blunt, um, it is um, my honor to support in some small way and to try and work with my colleagues um, whose work is tireless and significant in sustaining national service. Roy, without you, none of this would be possible. And I am so deeply grateful for everything you do to keep our communities vibrant and to sustain national service in our country. Please give Senator Blunt a roaring round of applause for his tireless advocacy for national service. Thank you. We have some great Delawareans here tonight from Sussex County Habitat for Humanity, from Public Allies Delaware, from Startup Africa. Um, each of you help service continue to come alive in our home state. As you heard in the introductory video, it was through launching one of the very first National Direct AmeriCorps programs with the I Have a Dream Foundation uh, now decades ago that I first got to see the power of national service. Um, a terrified person in his early 20s having no idea what I was doing, administering a $1.5 million federal grant and trying to train and support 150 members in 15 cities. I learned how to fly the plane while building it. It was a memorable experience, but it was one of the most um, confidence-building, challenging, growth-oriented experiences of my entire adult life. And as one of my young members said as we were finishing our third year of national training, this is the most patriotic I've ever felt in my life. Some of you have heard me say that my own father, as a sergeant in the 1st Infantry, learned what it meant to be an American someone who'd never been exposed to people of different faiths and regions, backgrounds, and traditions, his sense of what it meant to be an American first came to him through military service, as was the case with my brother and my uncles. For me, that same sense of who we are as a nation came from time dedicated to trying to lift up young people in tough schools. Our 150 AmeriCorps members did mentoring and tutoring, summer enrichment and after-school programs, partnering with teachers and parents in some of our nation's toughest communities and schools. 
And then a decade later, I had the chance to once again start a second AmeriCorps program that supported and sustained the volunteer fire service in my home county. You heard in the introduction that I am continuing to try and move forward a bill that I'm honored to support Senators Jack Reed and Tammy Duckworth, both folks who as veterans have served our nation. The Action for National Service Act would make real the doors of opportunity that national service should open. The GI Bill, that deserves a round of applause, thank you. We have some folks running for president who think that Americans will support the idea of free universal higher education and the forgiveness of all accumulated college debts. And while ambitious and bold, that's a vision that I think is actually out of keeping with an American tradition of earned opportunity for higher education. The GI Bill is one of the most widely respected, most widely supported bills in American history. And that's because no one doubts that our men and women in the armed forces earn the college opportunity that their military service makes possible. What the Action for National Service Act would do is in a lesser but still very real way, reward young Americans who dedicate two years to full-time national service, civilian service here at home, with four years of college tuition at an in-state institution. That might get people's attention, but it's not really the goal. The goal is to change expectations in elementary school, middle school, and high school, to create a new expectation of national service so that we would all turn to each other as we get to know each other as adults and say, where did you serve? We also hope to change the expectations of employers so that they say preferentially, we want to hire people who have done their national service, civilian or military. We also want to change the expectations of colleges and universities so that they say we want young people who either have served, are serving, or will serve. We want to change our national culture to once again embrace the national service culture, which was such a key part of our nation and its formation in the last decade, as, excuse me, in the last century. As we look at nations around the world, that have vibrant civic cultures, significant social cohesion, where they don't suffer the sorts of division and distance and divisiveness that we see in the United States today. It is a commitment to each other through national service that is typical of those nations. The United States has to take this moment to recognize that national healing will only come through national service, through genuinely seeing each other and knowing each other through just the sort of sacrifice and time together that our men and women in our armed forces have known and that those who have been part of national service have known. So let me close by saying this. I am excited. I am excited to see next month the report of the National Commission on Military, National, and Public Service, an effort that Senator McCain himself championed and I'm excited about the release next month of this report so that this commission's holistic view of service from all perspectives as I just described it, which will I understand also include proposed legislative text, might quickly become our nation's answer to how we engage with and respect each other and how we invest in national service. So to Voices for National Service and Ann Mora, thank you for this recognition. Um, to Cindy McCain, the McCain family, and the memory of my dear friend John, um, thank you uh, for the humbling award of a name, of an honor in his name, and to my colleague, Senator Roy Blunt, and so many others who you will recognize tonight for their great service, thank you for letting me be a part of the community in Congress that recognizes the power of service. Thank you.